Well, hello there, Earthlings. Greetings, and what is up? Today, I am back with a review of another brand new podcasting microphone from Shure. That microphone being the MV7X, X standing for XLR because this is an XLR only version of the Shure MV7, which I reviewed last year, I believe. This microphone will cost around $179. I will throw some links down below if I can find them. Also, in the sake of full disclosure, I do need to let you know that Shure sent me this microphone free of charge for the sake of making this review. And for this review, I have the microphone connected directly to the Focusrite 18i 22nd Gen. I'm recording 24 bit. 48 kilohertz. My gain is set at around 4 o'clock, and I will not do any kind of post processing, but I might have to boost it a little bit in post, so check the doobly doo to see what I diddly did. And now let's talk about what comes in the box. What a shocker, you are going to get the microphone. It comes with a foam windscreen already installed. It also has this already installed mount as well as a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter and you'll get a little bit of documentation. Then as far as the build quality, I really don't have any complaints about it. It has an all metal body as well as a metal grill if you take off the foam windscreen. You do have these really nice metal screws to tighten down the mounting system. On the note of the mounting system, that is all metal as well. As we move around the microphone, there are no buttons or switches, which is quite different from the MV7 because you do not have this LED panel. On the rear, you do only have an XLR port, which again is different from the MV7. And if it matters to you, this microphone is made in China. Then as far as the specs, I actually don't have any of that information, but the capsule in the MV7X is identical to the capsule in the MV7. So I pulled a couple pieces of information and I believe it does match the MV7X. It's no surprise this microphone does have a cardioid polar pattern. I believe it also has a frequency response of 50 Hertz to 16 kilohertz, and it has a sensitivity of around negative 55 dB. Now I'm moving around the MV7X to 90 degrees so you can hear the off-axis rejection and coloration. We'll continue around the microphone to 180 degrees. Here's what the rear sounds like. Continuing around the microphone to the second 90 degree angle. There we go. And then we will rotate and end the front of the microphone. Now let's go ahead and see how well this microphone does at rejecting plosives. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I'm right on top of the microphone to demonstrate the proximity effect on this thing. Now I'm about three inches away from the microphone with it pointed at the corner of my mouth and here's how it sounds. Now we're about one foot away from the microphone. Now we're about two feet away from the microphone. And now we're about four feet away from the Shure MV7X. Now I'm typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for those who use them, now I am just typing on the sad W keys. Here is how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room. Here is where the microphone is, and here is how the microphone sounds in a completely untreated room. Next, because the microphone comes on this built-in mounting system, we do need to see how effective that is at rejecting shocks. So I will go ahead and start by tapping on my desk to see how much of that noise it can reject. And then I will tap on the boom arm. Now I'm going to go ahead and tap on the body of the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. And lastly, a very common thing you see on the Shure SM7B is people removing the foam windscreen because the windscreen dampens the high end a bit. So let's go ahead and see how the MV7X performs without the windscreen to see if that brightens up the top end at all. In case that wasn't enough, here is a quick sample speaking into the 7X with the windscreen installed. And now I have removed the foam windscreen and here's how the MV7X sounds. It doesn't look as good, but it does brighten up the top end quite a bit. And now we're going to do a very quick spoken word comparison between the Shure MV7X and a bunch of other microphones that are available so we can see how this stacks up against the competition. 
Like always, we'll start on the mic that we're reviewing. This is the MV7X, three inches off, gain at four o'clock, and here's how it sounds. First up, we're on the Shure PGA58. This is a $54 handheld dynamic microphone, and here's how it sounds. Let's jump back to the MV7X. Back on the MV7X, here's how it sounds. Let's jump to another mic and do some more comparisons. Now we are on a very popular XLR and USB dynamic mic. This is the Samson Q2U, $70, using it in the XLR mode. Three inches off, gain at four o'clock. Check the lower third and let's jump back to the Shure. Another very quick sample just to cleanse your palate. This is the MV7X. Let's jump to another microphone. Now we're on the new Audio-Technica AT2040. This is a $100 broadcast dynamic mic. Three inches off, gain at four o'clock. Let's jump back to the 7X. For the fourth time, I think we are back on the Shure MV7X. Nothing has changed. Let's jump to the next microphone. Now we're on the Rode Pod mic, another $100 broadcast dynamic microphone. Three inches off, gain still at four o'clock, and here's how it sounds. Let's jump back to the Shure and do more tests. Here we go, Shure MV7X, just so you can hear how this sounds in between every microphone. Let's jump to another one. Now we're on the Audio-Technica ATR2100X-USB, a new $100 XLR and USB dynamic mic, three inches off, gain at four o'clock, XLR mode, and let's jump back to the Shure. Sure, MV7X, again, nothing has changed. Check the lower third to see how much I boosted it, and let's go to another one. Next, we are on the SE Electronics SEV7, a $100 XLR handheld dynamic microphone, three inches off, gain at four o'clock, and here is how this sounds compared to the Sure MV7X. Let's jump back and do more comparisons. Back again on the MV7X, three inches off, gain at four o'clock, nothing has changed, next microphone. Now we are on the Shure SM58, one of the most popular microphones of all time, $100, three inches off, gain at four o'clock, and here is how this sounds, everybody knows it, everybody loves it or hates it, everybody's got a thought on it. Let's jump back to the other Shure, the one we're reviewing, and do more. I bet you wouldn't have thunk it, but we are back on the MV7X again. Here's how it sounds. Let's go to another microphone and do more of these. Now we are on the MXL BCD1, another broadcast dynamic microphone. This costs $150. I am three inches off. My gain is at four o'clock. Check the lower third because I will not have to boost this as much. And there you go. BCD1 versus MV7X. Let's go to another one. Back on the mic that we're reviewing, here's how it sounds, get a good feel for it, and let's go to the next one. Now we are on the Samson Q9U. I am in XLR mode, and I have the mid-boost engaged. Three inches off, gain at four o'clock. This costs $200, and this is an XLR and USB mic. There you go, Samson Q9U versus MV7X. Let's jump back to the Shure. During these comparisons, I swear my mind does not slip away from me at all. Back on the MV7X, let's go to another one. Now we are on the Rode Procaster, a $230 XLR broadcast dynamic microphone, three inches off, gain at four o'clock. Check the lower third to see how much I boosted it, and there you go. Rode Procaster versus Shure MV7X. Next microphone. I don't know how many of these we have done. I think we're coming up on the end. Is this the 11th? MV7X, back to the next one. Now we are on the Shure MV7. I am using this in XLR mode. I am three inches off, gain at four o'clock, and here's how it sounds. Do you hear a dramatic difference between the MV7X and the MV7? They do have the exact same capsule in it, and I was told the only difference is the USB controls and all that in there. So let me know in the comments down below, is there a difference, and which one do you like better? Let's go back and do more comparisons. I believe we have a couple more to go, but this is the MV7X, just so you can hear it, and let's go to the next one. Now I am on the Shure SM7B. I do not have the presence boost or low cut engaged. I'm about three inches off of this. My gain is still at four o'clock. Check the lower third, and there you go. Here is how the SM7B sounds like compared to the MV7X, the microphone that was inspired by the SM7B. Let's do more comparisons. 
I believe we have two more to go. This is the MV7X. Nothing has changed. Let's go to the second to last microphone. Now we are on the Electro Voice RE20. I am three inches off. My gain is at four o'clock. And here's how it sounds. $450 versus $180. There you go. Let's do one more comparison. And finally, we have made it. Let me know in the comments if you can guess what this last microphone is going to be. Let's jump to this last microphone. And lastly, we are on the Neumann U87AI, three inches away, gain at 11 o'clock, cardioid mode, no pad, no filter, and this costs $3,600 just for consistency's sake. There we go, Neumann U87AI, $3,600 versus the Shure MV7X, $180. Which one do you like better? Let me know in the comments down below which of these microphones was your favorite, and let's jump to the music test. Because I've got a thousand mics, I must have a great life. Well, let me tell you now, yeah, I guess that's right. Now, if it's not abundantly clear, that's what we call a joke. <laughs> the amount of microphones that an individual possesses has absolutely zero bearing on their quality of life. I just want to make, I want to, I need to make that abundantly clear. So let's go to the conclusion. I was kidding. Okay, I actually think the XLR output on the MV7X is an improvement over the XLR output on the MV7, which is more expensive. But let's start with the pros. And first up, the background noise rejection on this thing is pretty respectable. And if it matters to you, it is that broadcasty look and it will look a little bit better in video. But then as far as cons, I don't think the mic did a very good job at plosive rejection. So I would recommend picking up a pop filter or getting very good with your mic technique to avoid putting a plosive right into the mic. And also just like the MV7, it still has that issue of being very microphonic where it just picks up all kinds of shocks and isn't able to reject them. Then as far as my overall thoughts and opinions of this microphone on the electric guitar, it's not a guitar mic, but I do think it is workable. You are going to be getting a more mid forward sound. The bass is very clean sounding, but because of that, it doesn't have much oomph. It doesn't have much weight to it. And then the top end isn't overly clear, so you don't get much bite there, but a benefit there is it doesn't get overly piercing or sharp. Next up on the acoustic guitar, I think it's tolerable, but it really isn't anything that I would pick. It simply doesn't have that top end, that liveliness that I really look for on a mic that I'm going to use on the acoustic. And again, it does give you that very mid forward sound. Next up for singing, I found that we got a little bit more of that mid forward rounded sound quality to it, which I tend to like for singing. So I think it's workable. I think there are much better singing microphones out there, especially at this price. But if you're in a pinch and you have it for a podcast, I think it would work fine for that. And lastly, for spoken word, that's where I think this mic performed the best. The low end was really nice because it wasn't muddy, but they also didn't overly cut it, so it didn't sound anemic, it didn't sound empty or hollow. You still had this really nice low end to support your voice. Then the mids were quite impressive to me because they sounded pretty natural, especially compared to a lot of the other dynamics, until we started to get to the more upper end dynamics, but as far as more affordable dynamics, I think the mids on this were really impressive and pretty natural. 
And also I found myself liking the top end for spoken word because unlike a lot of dynamics, it's not over boosted in the top, so it doesn't sound overly artificial, but they also don't roll it off so you still have all of that information. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Shure MV7X? It's a maybe from me, but first I want to say something. I have no idea what happened from the Shure MV7 to the MV7X, but in my review of the MV7, which is the XLR and USB mic, I criticized the XLR output for being pretty poor. I was not impressed by it. The MV7X, the XLR output on this, is an improvement by tenfold. It sounds so much better than the MV7's XLR output, so that is a huge pro. But as far as who I would recommend it for, if you are looking for a broadcasty looking dynamic microphone and your budget ends at $200, I think this is one of the better sounding options, sub $200 if you're looking for that broadcasty look. But the reason I'm only saying I would maybe recommend it is if you don't care what your microphone looks like, sub $180, I think there are some incredible sounding options out there that are available. They just may not look as cool on camera. So if you don't care what the on-camera mic looks like, or maybe you don't have a camera, then I think you could get a better option. Also, if you really like the sound of this microphone, I found the PGA58 to be quite similar in sound. Not exactly the same, but very similar in sound for 50 bucks. So if you don't care what the mic looks like and you love the sound of this, PGA58... $54, and I think you're off to the races. But if you're looking for a broadcasty mic and your budget ends at 200 bucks, I think it's a really nice offering. All right, that's going to wrap up for today. Like I always say, let me know in the comments down below what did you think of this microphone, and also, which of the mics that I compared it against did you like the best? If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Hated it, big old thumbs down, and I've got nothing else. So if you want to be one of these amazing people over here, you can do so. Click the join button or go to patreon.com slash podcastage, join at the $5 tier or higher, and you could be one of them. They all really do help me continue to bring you these videos. So thank them. Thank you. I appreciate every single one of you for coming by, watching, listening. I don't know how to end these. <laughs>